What is going on my Reefing fam? March here. This is Fragbox TV. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, today's video is inspired by a comment on YouTube. Ben Simpson 4091 writes, Some astrinas will flow straight through them. You give way too many personal opinions these days without doing research to back things up. you are got a massive ego compared to when I started watching and that's why I'm leaving. Now let's dissect this comment here. In the video, I said that Aiken corals don't really have any known pests. The way zoanthids suffer from a number of pests, the way Acropora suffer from a number of pests, I was saying there were no species-specific pests that target just Aikens. And Simpson thinks that Astrina starfish do. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my ego has become too big. Let me talk to you about Aikens a little bit first. Now, Aiken corals are one of my favorite. Every single reef tank I've ever kept over the past 20 years almost always has some sort of Acanthostrea lordowensis or Acanthostrea, maybe the Micromusas. I always, almost always keep Acans. I absolutely love them. And I'm pretty experienced when it comes to keeping Acan coral. Over the years, I must have imported here thousands and thousands of Acans. This is just a glimpse of how many we have in the store right now. We keep a lot of them because I really do love them. So I can say with 100% certainty, there are no pests that target specifically Acan corals, the way some other corals are affected. You see, zoanthids have zoanthid eating spiders, zoanthid eating nudie branches, sundial snails, various predators. Acans do, don't have nudie branches or slugs or pests or worms that specifically target a Same can be said for Acropora. Acropora stuffer from red bugs, Acropora eating nudie branches, and Acropora eating flatworms. Same goes for Euphilia. There are Euphilia eating flatworms and all they target are Euphilia. They're species specific pests. The point I was making in the video is there is no species specific pest that eats only Acans. There was actually no discussion of Astrinas, but it's still good because let's talk about these. So I thought, you know what? Let's step back for a second and let's ask other people some reefing legends. Combined experience, if we take all of them together, it's over 150 years of reefing experience. And so I reached out to some people in the hobby and in the industry that I really respect and I ask questions when I'm stuck or I'm trying to learn about something. Now, I don't think Astrina starfish are bad. I don't think they eat corals, and I'm just gonna get that out of the way. And I'll touch why at the end of the video. And when I started asking people in the industry, I was kinda secretly hoping for a little bit of confirmation bias, but the answers I got are really surprising, and I'm really glad we're doing this. Julian Sprung, two little fishies. Reefing legend. Everybody in the industry knows him. He's been around forever. He's a published author. His word to me is the word of God when it comes to anything related to reef keeping. He says, hey March, I'd say mostly neutral, sometimes bad. I have seen them feed on coral tissue. There are very few species, so your experience may vary. Now that's something I didn't think about. There could be different species of Astrina starfish. Maybe some of them eat corals, maybe some of them eat acants, maybe some don't. Most people find them unsightly when their populations explode. My Im Imperator Angel keeps them off the glass so that they are pretty invisible in my home display. He doesn't eat them, but you won't see them on the glass. Somehow this keeps their populations lower than they would be otherwise. Thank you, Julian. I asked a good friend of mine and someone who's been in the industry for over 30 years. It's Paul Hughes at Advanced Aquarium Consultancy in the lovely United Kingdom. I ask, this is the same question I asked to everyone. Hey. Astrina starfish, good, bad, or neutral? Paul says, different types. We often refer to one species, but there's definitely a red speckled one and a gray background that's found on stony corals and monties. Hmm. Some say they are all bad, especially those into zoas, but I say it's more of an opportunistic species. Okay. Most just spend time grazing on glass and biofilm algilla, algae, algae, and coralline algae. Worth keeping in check, especially if you have a plague with holoquin shrimp that's on loan or shared with a fellow hobbyist. 
Very difficult to eradicate, as even the most tiniest fragments of one will grow into many in the future. Thank you, Paul. That's a great answer. Again, he's noting here that there are different species. Most of them probably only eat algae or biofilm, but there may be some that actually are carnivorous and will eat corals. I asked a shop here locally with over 20 years experience. His name is Daniel Aquatic Kingdom, and he's actually opening up the first coral farm in Cambodia. So I'm hopeful that we're gonna get out there one day with the camera and document that and check it out. He says, I don't mind Astrina starfish as long as they have enough algae to eat. Hmm. Usually I see them coming out when the lights are off. I think they're also scavengers and could possibly eat dying coral tissue. I have never seen them go after healthy coral. Now, Daniel's answer is probably the closest to my own experience when it comes to Astrina starfish. Now I ask another shop locally. And this is what the owner told me. I believe they're a pest. They can eat a variety of corals. It will be very difficult to even tell as they usually do their hunting at night. They also eat coralline algae in huge numbers. They're gonna become an eyesore as well. They have some benefits such as algae control and free starfish, but I believe the bad outweighs the good. Now, it sounds like this answer is a lot closer to Ben Simpson's thought on Astrinas. Then I asked Patrick at Reef Wholesale in the industry, 25 years, imported thousands of corals, fish, inverts. This guy knows what's going on when it comes to livestock. He's the largest wholesaler in our country today. Patrick says, no, I've never heard of them eating corals. It's most likely that the starfish was eating decaying or dead flesh off the coral. I've never actually seen them eat any corals. Finally, I think this person put it best. We have Fan from Tidal Gardens. He needs absolutely no introduction. I think Astrina starfish can be both things. Great cleanup crew, but can also eat corals. Better cleaning rocks than almost everything else. Reproduce a little too quick. Coral eating on par with blue leg hermits and peppermint shrimp. And then he makes a really good point. He says, last thing, you are $50 shrimp away from getting rid of them at any time you want, which is true. If you think that they're no good for your tank and you have an outbreak, add a harlequin shrimp. Something about that shrimp, it's like they can sense it in the water. Anytime I've added one to a tank, the astrinas just come out. It's almost like there's, there's some sort of odor or, or a way of them knowing that there's a predator in the tank. So any of them that are hiding in the rock suddenly, I find that they're just out and about. They're, they're trying to get away. So it's a really good point. If you think they're no good, if you think they eat corals, toss in a uh, harlequin shrimp and they're gonna be gone. Now, where do my ideas on astrinas come from? I have lots of them in this tank here. If I come in at nighttime, I can wipe my hand on the glass and probably grab 20 or 30 on each pane. But I have lots of healthy acans and lots of healthy corals. So I'm, I think a little bit closer to the way Patrick or Daniel thinks is that they're opportunistic. They eat algae, they eat biofilm, they're generally harmless, but if there's already a coral that's suffering and there's decaying or dying tissue, they're opportunistic. They may be enticed to already eat that piece. I don't think that they eat healthy acans. Um, I'm almost, I can say with certainty, just because I have so many in here. But then that goes back to the point the other guys made, there's different species. So maybe Ben Simpson, maybe you're right. Maybe there is one species that really has a tasting for acans or LPS or meaty corals to begin with, and I've just never kept them. Maybe I have just one certain species in here. I did a video three years ago on a Fusion 20 gallon, Innovative Marine. The thing was packed with corals and also, coincidentally, packed with astrinas. At nighttime, when you turned off the, the lights, you almost couldn't see through the tank. There had to be hundreds and hundreds, and I did a video on that, and that's what really led me to believe they're not harmful, because how can I have a coral tank thriving with a, you know, a nano tank, but with you know, so many different species of growing healthy, happy coral, and at the same time, these starfish that some people say are no good. I think it's up to you at the end of the day if you're gonna keep them or not keep them. Um, you know, something that I've always taught the staff here, because they ask me, March, is this good? Should we take this out? I always say, when in doubt, just take it out. Euthanize it, take it out of the tank, put it in our invert system, see if somebody wants it for free. Personally, I leave Astrinas. I think they do a good job of cleaning up, but I really appreciate you, Ben Simpson, making the comment. I'm sorry that we lose you as a viewer. I hope we don't after making this video. And I like the comments. I like stuff like that when you guys say, March, your ego's getting too big. I'm out of here. Okay, maybe I got to simmer down a little bit, but remember, anything that I'm saying on camera, I'm speaking from my experience in the hobby. Um, the next guy, the next channel, he's gonna say based on his experience. Maybe I could do a little bit more research before 
saying stuff, but a lot of times I'm speaking with confidence because I have uh, maybe a false confidence in the certainty of the things that I'm saying. But anyways, I don't know if we really put this issue to rest. Maybe we just made it more confusing, but regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that we get some really cool and funny and different comments because maybe it'll inspire the next one. And maybe we'll see you guys back here on the next episode of Fragbox TV. Bye for now.